Living, he loved me, died to save me, buried and he carried my sins away, rose and he justified, freed me forever. One day he's coming on that glorious day. Living, he loved me, dying to save me, buried and he carried my sins away. Rose and he justified, freed me forever. One day he's coming on that glorious day. Oh, he lived and he loved me, dying to save me. Buried and he carried my sins away. Rose and he justified, freed me forever. One day he's coming on that glorious day. Oh, living, he loved me, dying to save me. Buried and he carried my sins away. Rose and he justified, freed me forever. One day he's coming on that glorious day. Living, he loved me, dying to save me. Buried and he carried my sins away. Rose and he justified, freed me forever. One day he's coming on that glorious day. Well, God bless you. Good morning, Dr. Haywood. Good morning, Sister Adams. Good morning, Sister Smithers Johnson. Good morning, Sister Mary. God bless you. Sister Butler, God bless you. Brother Butler and the family. Good morning, Lady Chetram. God bless you. And Pastor Chetram. Good morning, Sister Triplett. God bless you. Good morning, Bishop Desiree Alday and Lady Alday. God bless you. Good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph. God bless you. Good morning, Jamila. Good morning, Sister Cleckley. Good morning, Deacon and Mother Wilson. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Holmes. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Quarles. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Duchess. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Jackson Perry. God bless you, Brother Perry and the family. Good morning, Sister Randolph. God bless you. Good morning, Valerie. Good morning, Sister Spencer. Good morning, Katrina. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Deacon Grant. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Bessie. God bless you. Good morning, Mother Carr. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Burnett. God bless you. Good morning, Sister McLeod. Good morning, Sister Monique. God bless you, Sister Parker. Good morning, Sister Pe Law. Good morning, Sister Phyllis. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Joyce. God bless you. Good morning. God bless you, Deacon Grant. Praise the Lord. Deacon Briggs, God bless you. Good morning, Sister Matthews. Good morning, Brother Paul. God bless you, sir. Good morning, Sister Daphne. God bless you. Good morning, Ronza. Good morning. Praise the Lord, Sister Cook Jones. God bless you, Mother Meadows. Praise the Lord to you. Good morning, Pastor Hargrove. God bless you. Good morning, Mother Street. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Bailey. God bless you. Good morning, Deacon Arthur. Praise the Lord to you. Good morning, Missionary Domingo. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Stimson. God bless you. And Deacon Stimson, good morning. Good morning, Sister Angela. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Joanne. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Renee. God bless you, Sister Anderson. Good morning, Marilyn. Good morning, Mother Howard. Good morning, Sister Cheek. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Harrell Long. Good morning, Mother Morris. God bless you. And Minister Morris. Good morning, Sister Cynthia. God bless you. Well, praise the Lord and good morning, everybody. And welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever no, and we celebrate the risen living Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless all of you, and we thank God for you, and we appreciate um, the living, the fact that Jesus Christ is alive. Jesus Christ is alive. And we thank God that he is risen. We thank God that he is living. He is the living savior. And yes, he is living inside of each of us. So we celebrate this resurrection Sunday in joy and gladness. And we celebrate it thanking God for his goodness and his mercy 
and his grace in our lives. And I'm so glad that prayer works. I cried unto the Lord. He heard my cry, brought me up out of a horrible pit, placed my feet upon a rock and established my going. And so we are thanking God today to be alive in Christ Jesus. As always, if you have a prayer request, we want you to share it. If you're on Facebook, you can place it in the chat or you can inbox Refuge Temple or you can inbox Reginald Davis, Refuge Temple Church or Reginald Davis. If you're on Instagram, you can place your prayer request right in the chat or you can direct message Pastor RJD, Pastor RJD. And for everybody that's on the conference call, and thank God for our conference call listeners, and to everybody on YouTube and Instagram, or anybody can text your prayer request. To, you can text your prayer request to 336 Five six seven five three five eight. That number again is three three six five six seven five three five eight. Text your prayer requests so we can add them to the prayer list. We can pray over them, and more importantly, we can join our faith to your faith, believing God for what we know He is able to do. God is indeed able, and we celebrate. Hallelujah! His life. We celebrate his sacrifice for us and we celebrate his triumphant resurrection because he indeed lives. And because he lives, the songwriter said, I can face tomorrow. We can face every challenge of life because we know that Jesus Christ lives. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on and join me now in the closing verses of the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter number 22, and I want to read verses 20 and 21. Chapter 22, verses 20 and 21. He which testifieth these things saith, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And as we close this series on Revelation, on this Resurrection Sunday, um, I want to use for a subject, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The two greatest events predicted through prophecy, through scripture, through preaching and teaching, reflects the coming of Jesus Christ. Um, before Jesus was born in Bethlehem, this was the prophesied event of every writer in the Old Testament. Every writer in the Old Testament makes some reference to Jesus Christ coming. His birth, his advent, his coming in the earth. Born in Bethlehem, it was prophesied he would be born there. Coming from Nazareth, prophesied he would be born there. That he would be a part of the house of David, prophesied. All of these things validate the fact that when Jesus was born over 2,000 years ago, it was an answer to a prophetic call that goes back as far as Genesis that the seed of a woman shall bruise the serpent's head and he shall bruise, so bruise the serpent's head and the serpent would bruise his heel. Jesus Christ came. We were celebrating the fact that he died for us, making himself the sacrifice for our sins, the just dying for the unjust, the righteous dying for the unrighteous, but yet he died so that you and I could be saved, so that you and I could be born again. And then he rose from the dead, the resurrection, promised that if, if, if no man take of my life, but I lay it down of myself. And if I lay it down, I will pick it up again. And on that third day, resurrection morning, he picked it up. He stayed, the Bible says, for about 40 days. He was seen by witnesses met with the disciples, met with Mary Magdalene, met with others, and then he ascended, hallelujah, on the 40th day, taken up into the clouds, 
Hallelujah. But even as he was taken up into the clouds, the angels walked up because the disciples saw him go. They saw him go into the clouds. And as he went into the clouds, they walked up to the, these angels, walked up to the, the, the apostles and said, why stand ye here gazing into the heavens? This same Jesus, who you have seen go away, shall also return in like manner. So now the greatest prophesied event is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is coming again. He is coming again. He is coming again. And the point of revelation is certainly to share and to reveal those things that will come upon the earth, to reveal the, 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 the work of Satan in the Antichrist and in the false prophet and in the beast that moves like that, that moves like the Antichrist and all of the plagues and all of the disasters that will fall upon the earth. But at the core of this is the fact that Jesus Christ is coming again. Yes, there will be the Antichrist. Yes, there will be the tribulation. But what will bring all of this to a close, what will bring sin to a close, the work of Satan to a close, what will bring to naught the work of the Antichrist, what will cause the Antichrist to go into the lake of fire, who will cause the Antichrist, to, the, the false prophet to go into the lake of fire, death and hell to go to the lake of fire, Satan to go to the lake of fire, and everybody whose name is not found written in the Lamb's book of life shall go into the lake of fire. But what will cause all of this? The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yes, my brother, my sister, if you don't get anything from the four months in which we have talked about, taught, and shared, and, and, and given from the Word of God. I want you to carry from this the reality that Jesus Christ is coming again. Yes, He is. Jesus Christ is coming again. The song said, He's coming on the cloud, and every eye shall see Him. The Bible says, even those that pierced Him in His side, everybody's going to see the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and He is coming back again. I need you to put that in your spirit. I need you to create the urgency of the moment in your own mind, in your own life, your own ministry, that Jesus Christ is coming again. It is interesting that throughout this last chapter, this closing chapter of Revelation, the Lord says to us more than one time that he is coming, more than one time that he is coming quickly, that what we taught about this a few days ago, quickly, that there needs to be an urgency about our own life, an urgency about our own spirit, an urgency about our own walk, that Jesus Christ is coming again, urgent to the fact that we are constantly examining ourselves, urgent to the fact that we are repenting daily, urgent to the fact that we are operating in the ministry of urgency, warning people, saint and sinner alike, that Jesus Christ is indeed coming again soon. And every one of us, every single one of us, man, woman, boy, and girl, should be prepared for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he keeps saying it to us. That's why he keeps saying it. And I need you to look at the signs of the times. Just don't look at the government, just don't look at the news, just don't look at the earthquakes in diverse places, just don't look at all the things that people are doing, but I need you to look at the church. The Bible says, Jesus said, at a time when you think not, and people aren't talking about the coming of Jesus Christ. People aren't talking about the book of Revelation. People aren't talking about the rapture of the church and the coming of the tribulation. They're ju we're just moving along, singing and shouting and having our praise breaks and doing whatever it is that we're doing, but somebody needs to be running for their lives. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to be running to the altar. Somebody needs to be laying on the altar. Somebody needs to be seeking the face of God. Oh my God, Lord, let me be ready. Don't let me be caught unawares. Don't let me be caught without my works being done. Don't let me be caught. Hallelujah. Not prepared for your coming because I I want to be part of that first resurrection, that first resurrection, that first resurrection. The second death has no power. The second
second death has nothing but judgment, has nothing but the lake of fire that burns with fire and brimstone. You need to be in the rapture. Hey, God, I need to be in the rapture. I need to be a part of that first resurrection. My God. And so I have to be aware of it. I have to live, listen to me, in a constant awareness of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if I forget, if I allow myself to forget, I might be caught unprepared. Because the Bible says he's coming as what? A thief in the night. The thief doesn't warn you and tell you I'm coming to your house to rob you. The thief doesn't warn you to let you know that he's coming to get your stuff. But and then in the same manner, Jesus Christ is coming. And so the last phrase, the last phrase, the last reference in this book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 20, he testifieth, he that which testifieth these things, Jesus Christ has testified. He is responsible for this book of Revelation. He spoke to the angel, told the angel to speak to John. Tell John those things that will come. Tell John to reveal me to the world, to reveal my coming to the world. Tell John to do this. And John writes, he writes he writes, he writes, he writes everything that he sees. He's told not to seal up the book. Don't close it. Keep the book open so that others can read this book and know. So that others can read this prophecy and know. Tell everybody that will read it. Don't add anything to it. Don't take anything from it. If you add to it, the plagues will be added into your life. If you take from it, your name will be taken out of the book of life. Don't add anything. Just leave it like it is and make sure that people know about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he which testifieth these things saith, surely I come quickly. Surely is the word of oath. Surely is the word of promise. Surely is the word of guarantee. The same way he told Abraham, surely blessing I will bless thee. He's telling the church, surely I am coming back for the church. I am coming again. I am coming to bring judgment to the earth. I am coming, my God, to save, hallelujah, those that die in the tribulation, to seal those Jews, hallelujah, and those Israelites so that they will be a part of the new Jerusalem. I'm coming for all of that. I'm coming to do all of that. Surely, surely you can take it to the bank. It is guaranteed. Surely. I come quickly. That means every one of us needs to get into a hurry. Every one of us needs to examine ourselves. Every one of us needs to repent. Every one of us needs to be focused on our spiritual walk because Jesus Christ says, surely, that word of guarantee, surely I come quickly. Oh God, hallelujah, it's closer than we think. It's closer than we can imagine. It's closer than we can reference. This could be our last day. Oh my God. And if it's not our last day, we don't know when he's coming. So when you don't know when he's coming, you prepare. If you're not sure, if you're not sure, you know, trains and buses and airplanes have schedules. And the schedule says they're not going to depart until this certain time. Well, we don't have a schedule relative to the coming of Jesus Christ. The plane, you know, I remember this. I remember this. This happened a couple of years ago. My wife and I were on our way to New York to celebrate our anniversary. And we had bought good tickets and we got a little bit tangled up trying to find a parking space. And so we were rushing through security. But my watch said I had enough time. Listen to me. My watch said I had enough time because they were supposed to close the door until 15 minutes before the departure. So I'm rushing there and we get we get all the way to the gate and the door is shut. The door is shut. I'm angry. I'm upset. I'm trying to argue with the attendant. And I said, you know what? I said, my watch says, and my watch is accurate. It's adjusted to Eastern daylight time. My watch says that we're on time. She said, but my clock says that you're late. Oh my God. God, you need to make sure that your watch is aligned with God's clock because your watch could say that you're on time, but his clock might say you're too late. Oh my God, don't be too late because he's already said, surely 
I come quickly. Don't rely on your watch. Rely on his clock. And his clock says, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. The day that you have the opportunity to love God, to serve God, to walk with God, do it. The Bible says, be ready because you don't know. I know you got to watch. I know you got to watch. I know you got a calendar, but you don't know. I don't know. We don't know when Jesus Christ is coming. But hear the response of the church. Hear the response of John. Even so, come Lord Jesus. If you're coming, Jesus, come Lord Jesus. Come while we're ready. Come while we're prepared. Come while we've made preparation. Come while we're blood washed, while we're fire baptized, while we're on fire to serve the Lord, while we're on fire to walk with God. Come Lord Jesus. Even so, only somebody that is ready, that knows they're ready, can say, even so come Lord Jesus. If you don't know you're ready, you don't want to say that. If you don't know that you're prepared, if you don't know that you're blood washed, if you don't know that you're born of the water and of the spirit, if you don't know that you're living for God and you're living your life in preparation for his coming, you don't want to say, even so come Lord Jesus. You're saying, Lord, give me time. Lord, give me time so that I can be ready to meet you when you come. But if you're ready, you can say to the Lord, even so, come Lord Jesus. Even so, Lord, even so, Lord, even so, come Lord Jesus. And then this great book of Revelation closes with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. If we're saved, it will be by grace. If we are raptured, it will be by grace. It will not be any goodness of our own. It'll be no mercy of our own. It will be simply that he gave us grace to be ready, to be ready. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. I haven't tried in anything that I've shared in the, in the last four months to indicate that I knew when Jesus was coming. But I tell you this, I know he's coming. I know he's coming. Why? Because he said he's coming. And he says he's coming quickly. And so our response should be to get ready and then say, even so, come Lord Jesus. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Let's thank God for this wonderful teaching. And for anybody that's joined us late, if you go back on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, we started teaching on January the 12th. And you can read your Bible, you can follow the lessons, and you can be aware of this book. And so the word for today, on this Resurrection Sunday, is even so, come Lord Jesus. God bless you. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. My gracious God, I love you. I thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your love, and your kindness. Lord, you have been so very good to us. Kept us last night, awakened us this morning. We're in our right mind. We could get out of the bed and get prepared to join this great cadre of believers, God, from all over the world. Thank you for the morning prayer family. And God, I'm asking you to put your presence in this prayer room to touch us, to strengthen us, to forgive us, to sustain us, to empower us, to enlighten us. My God, send your glory into the prayer room now. And Lord, minister right now to every need that is in this prayer room, to every circumstance, every condition. And Lord, to condition our hearts and our minds that we might receive from you miracles, signs, wonders, unexpected favor. My God, help us today. Help us at this moment and bless us, God, in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we pray for everybody whose name's in the chat, as we pray for everybody whose name is it's been sent by text or messenger or email, God, we're praying that you would minister. Lord, I'm praying for Dr. Hayward today. Lord, that you would allow him to recover that which was taken from him. In the name of Jesus, thank you, my God, for sparing his life. Thank you for being 
being with him. Now God allow him to recover what was taken. We're praying for the sad this morning. Anybody that is broken emotionally, broken spiritually, anybody fighting depression today, we're praying for them right now that you would touch and deliver. We're praying for Cheryl Antoine. We're praying for anybody today that has a financial need. Lord, just not enough money to make ends meet. Just not enough resources to meet the needs, but we're praying for them now. Oh God, because you are a provider. We're praying for Devron. We're praying for Keith McCall. We're praying for Sylvia. We're praying for May Gallus Riley. We're praying for Chris McAfee, for Latasha Walker. We're praying for Christian Johnson. We're praying for Nikki and Serenity. We're praying for Kimberly Crawford. We're praying for Junior Johnson, for the Jackson family, for Dana Surratt today. We're praying for John Mars. We're praying for James Jones. We're praying for Apostle Sylvester Norwood. We're lifting up Elder John Williams, Minister John Williams. We're praying for Elder Dennis Hilliard. We're praying for Sister Nicole Frank today. We're praying for Sister Shamika Eunice. We're praying for Missionary Joyce Hammonds. We're praying for Dorothy Bridges. We're praying for Elaine Carter and her family. God, that you would save. We're praying for Mother Cummings today. We're praying for every name on the prayer list, every name in the prayer book, every name sent by text or messenger or email. God, that you would stretch out your hand. Lord, to send deliverance, to send grace, to send help. God, we're praying for the unsaved today. Lord, that you would save, save, save. Lord, my God, prick people in their hearts. Cause them to turn their hearts to you. Lord, let them repent of their sins. Let them be baptized. Oh, God, unborn of the water and of the spirit today. My God, touch and deliver. Let them take heed to the warning. Oh, my God, that is in the land right now. I pray for backsliders today day that you would reclaim and restore. I pray for the church, God, that you would keep us in a state of readiness. Anything in us, my God, that is not like you, God, we repent. We come before you begging your mercy, begging your grace, and asking you, God, oh, God, to revive and to restore, to forgive and to sanctify. Oh, my God, by your spirit and by your word. God, I'm praying today for the sick everywhere. Everywhere, God, somebody's sick, but we lift them up before you. Somebody recovering from surgery. Somebody fighting an illness, God. We're praying right now. We're praying for Priscilla Gregory, for Justin Edwards, for Mother Rashida Moya. We're praying for Sheila Reed. We're praying for Marquita. We're praying for Larice Donaldson, for Elaine Scott, for Scott Morgan, for Sylvia Matthews, for Miracle Destiny. We're praying for John, for Vincent. We're praying for Jacqueline Hunt. We're praying for Devon Riley. We're praying for Mother Jeanette. Hicks. We're praying for Mother Shirley Owens. We're praying for Alexis Smith. We're praying for Lamont Edwards, for Joyce Young, for Gloria Young. We're praying for Charles Reese, for Madonna Schaefer. We're praying for Missionary Domingo today, Missionary Brisbane, Missionary Roseman, Missionary Hodges. We're praying for Jack and Mary Simpson. We're lifting up Mother Barbara Davis. We're praying for Deacon Davis's brother. We're praying, my God, for Brother James Page. We're praying for Greg Stewart, Diane Cooper, Corey Coleman, Dinah Lark, we're praying for Philip, for Harold, we're praying for Dulcie's grandson, we're praying for Lillian Johnson, every name on the prayer list, God. God, we're lifting up Bishop Alfonso Brooks, Mother Shirley Clark, Mother Evangeline Jenkins, Lady Andrea Maxwell, Mother Carol Coleman, Sister Shakaya Polk, we're praying today, my God, that you would remember Bishop Mac Vincent, Mother Barbara Vincent, Mother Celestine Peters, remember Bishop Irving Taylor, Bishop Gregory Wilder, Bishop Alvin Palmer, we pray for for Apostle Leroy Joseph, Apostle Charles Williams, Apostle Sylvester Norwood. God, we're praying today for Brother Wiggins, Brother and Mother Sherrod, Deacon and Mother Garland today. We're praying for Dr. Hayward today, God. Mrs. Hayward, God, we're praying for Dr. Hayward's mother. We're praying for Mother Jill, Mother Pride. We're praying, my God, for Mother Hallelujah Chambers, Mother Carter, Mother Moorhead. We're praying today that you would remember, my God, Lady Staten, everybody, God, that's suffering in their bodies. We're praying for them now. Remember Pastor Carr and Minister Carr today. My God, remember, hallelujah. 
minister of Elder Tyson and Elder Smith. God, remember everybody, my God, that's suffering in their bodies today with your healing virtue. Mother Foster, Henry J., Brother Cliff today, remember them. Remember, my God, Mother Tanaj, Mother Holman, Missionary Simmons today. Lord, look on everybody, everybody that's suffering physically. God, touch them, heal them in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, my God, Cynthia, Catherine, and Duchess today. Remember Marlette. Remember Maurice today. Remember Dennis and Tony, Kimberly, God. Remember, my God, Chris. Remember Deacon Grant this morning. Remember, my God, in the name of Jesus, Pastor and Lady Winston. Remember, my God, Bishop D. Remember Apostle Keith this morning. Everybody that needs healing, God caused them to recover in the name of Jesus. Remember Garland today in your precious name. We're praying, oh God, for Deacon Adams, for Deacon Wilson today, Deacon Harris and Elder Toll. My God, let your healing virtue flow in the mighty name of Jesus. God, walk into every hospital, walk into every cancer ward, COVID ward, ICU unit, dialysis unit. God, in the name of Jesus, remember LaShondra today in your precious name. Remember, my God, everybody in a nursing home, a rehab center, Lord, touch them now in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I'm praying today for grieving families everywhere. I'm praying for Miriam's husband and their family today. I'm praying for the Patel family. I'm praying for the family of the A&T student, oh God, that was killed. I'm praying for the Peyton family. I'm praying for Claudia Bush. I'm praying today, my God, for Mother Moya, her sister, and the family. I'm praying today that you remember, oh God, in the name of Jesus, everybody grieving. Remember Sister Jackie Poole. Remember Elder Jerry Perry and the family. Remember in the name of Jesus, Sister Takesha Hill, her brother, and the family. God, everybody grieving everywhere. Look on them. Help them. Strengthen them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm praying today for grieving people everywhere. Remember, my God, hallelujah, Lady Maxwell, Charles, and Cedric, and the family. God, we're praying today that you remember Dr. Carter and the family, Bishop Field Shekinah and the family. We're praying today that you remember Mother Harrell, that you remember and the family. Remember Mother Jacqueline Grant and the family. Remember the Groover family. Remember the Kramers today. Remember the Hargroves, the Blunt family. God, strengthen them in the name of Jesus. We're praying, my God, that you remember the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdy's, the Sneeze, the Washington Fields family. We're praying for the Bonhams, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters today. God, we're praying that you remember the Giles family, that you remember, my God, in the name of Jesus, the Meadows family, the Moyers. Remember the Perkins family. Remember, my God, in your precious name. Look on, hallelujah, the Perkins family. We pray for Pam, her mom, and her sisters today. We pray for the White family, God. We're praying today for Anita and the Bride Hopkins family, Margie and the McLean Melvin and Street families. We're praying today that you look on the Ransom family, the Jackson family, God, the Ned family, the Newkirk family, the Green family, with your touch, oh God, of grace and mercy and healing. God, we're praying today that you would look on everybody, oh God, that is grieving everywhere. God, remember the Middletons, remember the Winninghams, remember the Bankses today, the Taylors this morning. We pray, my God, that you would give grace and strength, oh God, to everybody that is grieving. Look on, my God, the Felix family, the Sapata family, the Mannix, the Boodrums, the Gleans, the Arthurs, my God, the Taylors, the Phillips family, oh God, the Matherins, my God, the Briggs family, every grieving family everywhere, the Johnsons, oh God, the Josephs, God, strengthen them now. Remember, my God, in your precious name, the Davises, remember the Allens, the Hayses, the Moors, the Caldwells, remember the Harbisons, remember the Austins and the Adams family, my God, every grieving widow, widow, word, child, parent, my God, give them comfort now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God, I'm praying for the body of Christ. I'm praying for the church today. Every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder, my God, every first lady, every pastor's child, every mother and missionary, minister and deacon, I'm praying today that you would look on, my God, the young people, the young people in the church, God. I'm praying today that you would look on every music singer and psalmist and God help the church help the church to stand help the church to be strong help the church to do your will help the church to be ready my God when you come oh God help us Jesus to prepare our hearts our minds our souls oh God to clean our lives that we might be ready when you come I'm praying today for first responders essential workers firemen policemen EMTs I'm praying today for school employees and students everywhere. I'm praying for everybody that works, 
to help other people. God, in private duty, in hospitals, nursing homes, rehab centers, clinics, banks, stores, factories, trucks, construction sites. Lord, cover with your precious blood in the name of Jesus. Ashama. Hey, God, keep us, oh God. Oh God, protect us, oh God, from all the diseases that are afoot. And God, bring healing to every sickness. And as your healing sickness and surgery and disease, God, heal the land, heal the land, heal the land. Oh God, all over the world there's trouble and turmoil, but heal the land from sin, heal the land from hatred, heal the land from jealousy, from violence, heal the land, my God, from injustice, heal the land from racism and sexism, and let your church be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. God, I pray for those that are traveling to Baltimore that you would cover with your precious blood, that you would keep safely and protect. And Lord, bless the meetings that will take place, that all is done to your glory, to your honor, that you might get the glory out of everything, that souls might be saved and people's lives might be changed. And God, we give your name the glory, the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on, join me in giving God praise right now. Everybody on this line, come on, join me in giving God praise, giving God praise, giving God praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This might seem redundant, but it ought to be your daily prayer. Lord, let us all be ready. Let us all be ready. Hallelujah. The purpose of studying, reading the book of Revelation is so that it will awaken in us the urgency of what we need to do so that we can be ready to meet the Lord. And so we can help others to be prepared for the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the purpose. It's not just so you can impress people with your biblical knowledge and you can talk about the Antichrist and talk about what's going to happen. But it's so you will be ready for what is going to happen so that you can escape the judgment of God that is surely going to come upon this earth. I know people want to diminuate and dilute the scripture. But the bottom line is Jesus Christ is coming and we all need to be ready to meet the Lord when he comes. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your Sunday, your resurrection Sunday is off to a great start. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Hallelujah. Thank God for those that join us by conference call. Thank God for you. Keep coming. You can. This is also the Lord's Day, so you can join us for Sunday school at 10 a.m. and the morning worship and we have a special worship plan today at refuge temple if you can be on main street get to main street this morning at 11 30 a.m if you can't be on main street join us online for what will be a powerful and anointed worship service on today come and be a part of that service in the name of jesus christ and if you can't get to refuge get to some church get to the house of god and be in the lord's house as we celebrate his resurrection you can also stay connected to refuge temple through our podcast google podcast apple podcast soundcloud and spotify it's all available 24 hours a day seven days a week our radio broadcast airs every day monday through friday at 8 30 a.m on gregorygospel.com let me thank everybody Body that seeds and souls and shares with this ministry. Your gifts help us to do the things that we need to do, and we appreciate those gifts. And if you desire to be a blessing, you can mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's Refuge Temple, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can give online. Our website is www.refuge temple in as in North. C is in Carolina.com. Refuge Temple NC.com is our website. You can give on the donate page. If you have the Givelify app, you can give via Givelify. Just search for Refuge Temple Burlington and you will see a picture of our church. Hallelujah to know you're in the right place. Or if you have Cash App, our Cash App is 
dollar sign the number one refuge and we thank you for your giving but we thank you most of all for being a part of this morning prayer i want to invite everybody april 21st and 22nd to the revival the outreach conference that will be held at shiloh apostolic temple cathedral in atlantic city new jersey you can be with us that Friday and Saturday in the name of Jesus Christ. You can also, Father, just keep praying for us and keep coming to prayer, all right? And as you pray, pray for me, pray for Lady Davis, pray for our children, pray for my father, pray for my sisters, my in-laws, our nieces, our nephews, our entire family. Pray for Refuge Temple, that God will continue to bless us and that God will bless us today. And let's pray one for another, that wherever we are, the presence of God will be with us, souls will be saved, lives will be changed and the blessings of the Lord will flow to everyone. The Lord keep us ready to meet him so that we can say unashamedly, even so come Lord Jesus. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless each of you. Shalom, shalom.